Lord Lieutenant of Cheshire, Deputy Lords Lieutenant of Liverpool and Manchester, High Sheriffs of Cheshire, Liverpool and Greater Manchester, Mayors of Cheshire, honoured guests, a warm welcome to Chester Cathedral. On a day when we are delighted to have Bishop Julie and Bishop Sam with us to mark the start of their ministries as bishops of Birkenhead and Stockport, and to install them in their seats here in the choir. I know Bishop Mark is hugely relieved that you now join him in offering Episcopal ministry in this great diocese. Those of us who form the cathedral community look forward to fellowship with you in the years to come. It's good after months of social restrictions to have your friends and family here too and to be together. Many join us online and together we form a virtual community of prayer. For all those of you present here in the choir, there will be a reception to follow in the cloister garth. Sadly, we cannot easily extend this to those of you online that you may crack open a bottle of your own Prosecco, perhaps. But now, we turn to our worship as we gather with joy in the presence of Almighty God and before the whole company of heaven. speed to save us.
The first lesson is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, beginning to read at the fifth verse. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed towards the people, and they said, What have we done, letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army. They overtook them camped by the sea, by Pi Hahiroth in front of Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, but you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and the chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea 
not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is taken from the Gospel, according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, beginning to read at the first verse. Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, whenever you give alms, do not sound like a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so, your fast, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. upon us. The Lord save the Queen. Stars with righteousness. God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. <clears throat> Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot keep, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. 
light and our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thine only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank mm-hmm. you.
people. For all who are baptized have the privilege and responsibility of sharing in Christ's work in the world. Together we are called to proclaim His kingdom in word and action, to make disciples of all people, and to share Christ's risen life. Within this ministry, people are called to exercise particular offices. Bishop Mark, I present Junely Connolty, who has been consecrated as Bishop of Birkenhead, and Sam Corley, who has been consecrated as Bishop of Stockport. Thank you for your presentation. Bishops Julie and Sam, I invite you to kneel, and I will pray for you in a moment. As both of you have seen, it's already my custom to invite the whole congregation to pray for those who are commencing certain uh, roles and ministries, to ask the Lord perhaps to give particular verses from the Bible or words or pictures, and then to take that opportunity to write a postcard sometime during the coming weeks just as a reminder of what is prayed for you this day. So whether you're with us online or whether you're with us in person, as you pray now for Sam and for Julie, can I invite you not only to join in the prayer in this moment, but also to make a note and to send them a card in the coming days by way of encouragement and fellowship. Let's pray. God our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that each in our vocation and ministry may be an instrument of your love, and give to your servants, Julie and Sam, the needful gifts of grace, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bishops Julie and Sam, you have already taken such oaths and made such declarations before me as are required by law and statute. You have made the declaration of assent and the oath of allegiance required of all holy orders in the Church of England. So it's my privilege to read to you the instrument of delegation by which you exercise ministry alongside me and each other in this diocese. We, Mark, by divine permission, Bishop of Chester, acting under the powers and provisions of Section 13 of the Diocese Pastoral and Mission Measure 2007, and with the approval of the Diocesan Synod of the Diocese of Chester, having first been obtained, wish to delegate certain of our functions to the Right Reverend Julie and Connolty, Bishop Suffragan of Birkenhead, and the Right Reverend Samuel John Clint Corley, Bishop Suffragan of Stockport, within our Diocese of Chester. Now, therefore, we, Mark, by this instrument, delegate to the said Julie Ann Connolty and the said Samuel John Clint Corley, with effect from the date hereof until we otherwise order, all Episcopal functions that may be so delegated within our Diocese of Chester, with the exception of functions under any canon made under section 9.2 of the Clergy Ordination and Miscellaneous Provisions Measure 1964, and except also the power of delegation under section 13 of the Diocese Pastoral and Mission Measure 2007, always saving to us and to our successors our Episcopal rights. As witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hand this fifth day of September in the year of our Lord 2021, in the fifth year of our consecration, and the second of our translation. And so may the Lord bless you in this ministry. May he bring you joy and empower you to be ministers of good news, of peace, of healing, of reconciliation to be beacons of integrity, to be those who tell the stories of the kingdom and bring the blessing of Christ and the God of peace 
who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Bishop Julie, Bishop Sam, as you prepare to be installed, I invite you to take up and put on your robes. Sam, Julie, as I present back to you your pastoral staffs, it is my great privilege and joy to share this ministry of care with which we have been entrusted with you, the ministry of leading the people of God, the ministry of being witnesses for Christ in our communities, the ministry too of being served by, taught by, blessed by, loved by, prayed for by the people of God in this place. When you were ordained, you were reminded that you cannot bear the weight of this calling in your own strength, no more can I. But by God's grace, together we look forward in hope, and it is a joy to share this journey with you. So thank you for your fellowship. Thank you for the challenge that you'll be and the encouragement that you'll be. Thank you for the laughter and the tears that we shall share together. Thank you that in Christ you will help me to follow him, and I pray that I may have the privilege of helping you to follow him. For together we stand in Christ's service and in Christ's name. Christ has called you to be a shepherd to his people. So I hand to you these pastoral staffs as a sign of the ministry of oversight that you share with me. Keep watch over the whole flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you shepherd. Encourage the faithful, restore the lost, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. We now come to the installation. Mark, by divine permission, Bishop of Chester, to our well-beloved in Christ, Timothy Stratford, Dean of the Cathedral Church of Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary in Chester, greeting. By this mandate, we direct you to assign to the Right Reverend Julie Ann Connolty, Bishop of Birkenhead, and the Right Reverend Samuel John Clint Cawley, Bishop of Stockport, their stalls in the choir of the said Cathedral Church, to which they are by virtue of their office entitled, and as soon as may be to place and install them therein, in accordance with the statutes of the same, saving to us and our successors all Episcopal rights and the dignity and honour of the said Cathedral Church. Richard Stratford, Dean of the Cathedral Church of Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary at Chester, by virtue of the mandate from the Right Reverend Father in God, Mark Simon Austin Tanner, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Chester, place you, Julie Ann Connolty, in the seat of the Bishop of Birkenhead, and do install you as a member of the College of Canons of this Cathedral Church, with all the rights and duties of the said canonry.
Julie, the Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forward and forevermore. Amen. Timothy Richard Stratford, Dean of the Cathedral Church of Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary at Chester, by virtue of the mandate from the Right Reverend Father in God, Mark Simon Austin Tanner, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Chester, place you, Samuel and John St. Pauli, in the seat of the Bishop of Stockport, and who install you as a member of the College of Canons of this Cathedral Church with all the rights and duties of the said canonry. Sam, the Lord preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Friends, please do stand with me. You're not allowed to sit down very much in this job. This is my favorite bit of the whole service. For my brothers and sisters in Christ, I present to you bishops Julie and Sam, chosen, ordained, consecrated, and now installed as bishops of Birkenhead and Stockport in our Diocese of Chester. Will you accept their ministry among you and be ready to welcome them with open hearts and to strengthen them with your love and prayers? In the fellowship of Christ, we welcome you, Julie and Sam, as servants and shepherds of the people of the Lord. May the Lord richly bless you and make your ministry a blessing among us. Hopefully it is. Um, and uh, just to say thank you. Thank you uh, for those words. Um, thank you to everybody who's made this service happen, particularly those at the cathedral who've worked so hard. Thank you to Bishop Mark. He doesn't quite know what he's let himself in for yet. Um, I, I wanted to also say thank you to all of those who've been so welcoming. So whether it's on Twitter or sending me cards or telling me they're praying for me, and I know Sam has had a very similar experience. It's been lovely to be so warmly welcomed. It's a, a good many weeks and months since uh, Bishop Mark and I, and I guess Julie and Bishop Mark did the same uh, when uh, Julie came for interview as well, and we were trying to keep under the radar. Uh, and a lot has happened. Many boxes have been moved, and as Julie said, many cards and expressions of welcome uh, and greeting have been received. Uh, thank you for your prayers, and uh, we're, I think, just so pleased to be finally here uh, and able to get going, particularly after many weeks 
of keeping it uh, quiet under fear of uh, uh, being imprisoned in the Tower of London or something worse, I think. Uh, but uh, it's so good to be among you and to be uh, starting. And uh, Lord Lieutenant and High Sheriffs and representatives of the communities you serve as mayors, thank you so much for your uh, greeting and your welcome. We look forward to partnering not just with members of the Body of Christ here in Cheshire, but also with you in your great responsibilities in serving and leading people across this county and indeed beyond. So thank you very much indeed for your welcome and greetings too. So may I speak by invitation of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. Phew, I think is the main word I want to say, alongside a major hallelujah. The word that really leapt out from the reading as Martha read it to us so brilliantly, although Bishop Julie, you read brilliantly, of course, as well, was the word our our Father, as our Lord taught us to pray, our Father. My whole understanding of who we are in Christ is that we are community, and it is fantastic to gather as community here today with friends and family of our new bishops, with our civic dignitaries, and if I may particularly pick out the Lord Lieutenant of Cheshire, because this is the first time I think you've joined us for a formal service in your role as Lord Lieutenant, so you are welcome, and I know that I and all of us look forward to sharing many of these services with you. It is good to be together with all. But actually, today marks a new chapter not a new book, because God has been at work and will continue doing the work that he's doing here in this Diocese of Chester, but a new chapter as a new team gathers. We've uh, welcomed Bishops Sam and Julie, but actually just hiding behind them is Andy Stinson, who starts work at the same time as they do as our new Bishop's chaplain. And it is good to share this ministry together. But before I go on, I do just want to thank those who have seen this diocese through some really tough times over the last 18 months, because we have faced tough times. I'm sure that Bishop Keith is with us digitally. Bishop Keith, I want to thank you for your faithfulness, for the way and the wisdom with which you guided this diocese as Bishop Peter moved on and you were the sole uh, licensed, at least, bishop here in the diocese. My brother bishops who have served in so many ways, often behind the scenes, but at great personal cost, thank you for the service that you have offered. And I particularly want to pick out our two archdeacons. Sadly, Archdeacon Ian cannot be with us this afternoon, but Mike and Ian have shouldered far more than a normal archidiaconal burden over the last 18 months. And you have done so with godliness and grace and wisdom and astonishingly good humor and I know it's not only I who extend my thanks to you, but the whole of the diocese. So thank you. Thank you for the hour that has been and the hour that will be as we stand together in Christ. Julie, Sam, you first thought, well, you may have thought about these jobs before, I don't know, but when you first thought about these jobs actively, you picked up the candidate information pack which we had put together in it, I wrote a letter to you, which I know some of you will have seen and I've quoted bits of before in public, but most will not have read. Let me read that letter to you again as you formally start ministry in this diocese. I am grateful both to you and to God that you are willing to consider whether you are being called to join us in the Diocese of Chester as one of our bishops. And I want to assure you of my prayers and availability to talk if you would like to. That didn't stop with the exploration process, by the way. The process of Episcopal exploration is one of discernment as we seek the mind and heart of Christ together and for the sake of our communities and people of this diocese and area. This is and always will be our focus as we seek to serve the 1.6 million people in our varied and diverse communities. We are divided by geography, wealth, education, ethnicity, 
but united in our need for Christ. Chester Diocese seems to me to have a vocation to bridge gaps and make links. We stretch from Merseyside to Manchester and serve communities from Wallasey to Wilmslow to Whitewell. We engage communities aching in poverty and others in great security. The Cheshire Set, Ellesmere Port, Jodrell Bank and New Brighton, coasts, hills, rurality, industrial creativity, academic and scientific excellence, farmers, commuters and areas of significant poverty. We have no one overwhelming centre of population and so we stand together, united in Christ as we have been called to do for the last half millennium. We cling to him through the rather dramatically changing scenes of life and we are utterly committed to the communities we serve as we proclaim faith in this generation and so experience the love of God bridging the gaps between us and with him. This information pack and the discernment process we are following includes both vacant suffragan posts. Whilst there are distinctives between the two C's, at this stage in the life of the diocese, these are malleable and will be further shaped by the new Episcopal team and our colleagues. The opportunity to appoint both suffragans together seems to me a kindness of God as we commit to collaborative and creative working across our traditions and locations. We are looking for two new bishops to join the team and help us love Jesus and love others. We are not looking for heroes. We need people who will walk simply and humbly with Christ and inspire others to do the same. We're looking for people who love the church enough to keep us true to our calling. I am looking for colleagues, for me and for the rest of my staff team. Will you come and pray with us, laugh with us, open the scriptures with us, dream with us, cry with us, wrestle with us, and share Christian life with us. We want bishops who are as comfortable at a coloring table as they are at the Lord's table, as ready to don wellies as vestments, to serve the privileged and the outcast without fear or favor. We want bishops who keep survivors central to our safeguarding work, the lost central to our missional work, and Christ central to all that we are. Our new bishops will be inspiring communicators, hospitable pastors, missionally focused, prayerful, imaginative, and humble disciples of Christ. They will need to be resilient, strategic, and collaborative as they join us at a time of considerable change in this diocese. They will also be much loved and regularly held in prayer. Friends, I believe that this is what we have found, not because Julie and Sam are perfect, but because they seek to be faithful. Julie, Sam, this is what we invite you to be among us, not because you are perfect, but because you are faithful and will serve with us. I just want to pick up four very brief themes from that letter and from our readings. The first is that phrase which I used, but which I nicked from a hymn through all the changing scenes of life, the rather dramatically changing scenes of life. You will recognize the quote, through all the changing scenes of life in trouble and in joy, the praises of my God shall still my heart and tongue employ. O oh, make but trial of his love, experience will decide how blessed are they and only they who in his truth confide. The experience of God's people down through the ages is that when things get tough, our God is shown to be tougher. We have faced extraordinary trials as a world in the last 18 months. We've done so together, although very often these have masked the trials which individuals face, and we know something of the pain of that in this diocese as well. As we read of the people of Israel, escaping slavery in the land of Egypt. We recall once again that the people of God are no strangers to the sufferings that this world can bring. 
but neither is our God, who is always faithful, who is always good, whose ways might be hard for us to understand, but who will not let his people down and who has not finished with us yet. And so we stand together in changing scenes of life, always looking for Christ. Secondly, I want to pick up that theme with which I began, the theme of unity across difference. A good friend said to me, when you are looking for suffragans, please do not just look for clones. I hope I have heeded that advice. I do not believe that either of you are clones of me. Thank the good Lord, not only you, but also others cry. For one of the great charisms of the church in general, but particularly of the Church of England, is that we are united in our differences. That we constantly remind one another of our tendency, really our idolatrous tendency, to recreate God in our imaginations, in our own images, and thus limit Him to the capacity of our comprehension. And yet, as we gather together, often in friendship across difference, sometimes with frayed edges. Christ forms us into a new community in the love of God who is always bigger than our understanding. I'm not going to pretend for a moment this is always easy, but it is always good. So we stand together. We learn together. We grow together. We share together. Together we pray, our Father who art in heaven. Thirdly, I want to pick up that theme of gritty rootedness in Christ. I have to confess, as I get older, I struggle more and more with the drowning of a whole army in the Red Sea. And I just need to name that, not because it's not part of our scriptures, but because when I was a child, I thought it was rather marvelous. And I do see how the people of God were waging war, and war is tough. But it's a hard passage for us to wrestle with. We need to name the difficulties that we and others face. We have made a start on this in the diocese as we have dealt with significant safeguarding issues in the last year. But Christ does not call us to whitewash the problems, but rather to wrestle with them together and with him. To be a people who know the grace of forgiveness in the reality of life, not simply a simplistic answer system that we ourselves create as if we can airbrush the problems out of this world. It is forgiveness, not denial, that lies at the heart of our faith. It is the cross of a crucified and now resurrected Savior that shows that even though we cannot begin to comprehend, there is a way through the darkness that leads to the dawning light of revelation. Our faith is not around a magical answer, but rather a daily transformation as we follow in the footsteps of a crucified and risen Savior. And so we will wrestle with questions of how we continue to be good news across this diocese, to poor and rich alike, to those who have work and far too much of it, and those who have no work and are desperate for it. How we are good news to those who are arriving with nothing from Afghanistan or from other parts of our worn, torn world. How we are good news to the single mum, to those who struggle with education, to those who feel like they have nothing or everything. And in all of this, we find our way forward with a gritty rootedness in Christ. For He is our hope, our purpose, our meaning, our joy, and our destiny. And so the final thing I want to draw out again from that letter and our readings is that we are full of hope that we do not fully know what Christian hope looks like, and we will not know this side of glory, but we have been taught to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. As we tell the story of Christ, 
and find his life born in those to whom we are sent. As we see this worked out from the tiny to the huge, from the new to the ancient, we are people of hope. Julie, Sam, I am so pleased to be serving with you. I'm so pleased that you've come to help us work this out and to grow with us as you yourself grow and develop. God bless you as you pray with us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Amen. Blessed are you, eternal God. To you be praise and glory forever. Hear us as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Make us all one, that the world may believe. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That the life of Christ may be revealed in us. Strengthen all who minister in Christ's name. Give them courage to proclaim your gospel. Inspire and lead those who hold authority in the nations of the world. Guide them in the ways of justice and of peace. Make us alive to the needs of our community and help us to share each other's joys and burdens. Look with kindness on our homes and families. And grant that your love may grow in our hearts. Deepen our compassion for all who suffer from sickness, grief or trouble. In your presence may they find their strength. We remember those who have died. Father, into your hands we commend them. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. And in some moments of quiet, we make our own prayers to Almighty God, knowing that we pray not alone, but with Christ's Spirit within us and with God's people around us. And gathering together all our prayers, we pray together the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
In a moment, the blessing, but just before that, two very brief things. Firstly, thank you for being with us. If you are with us, particularly online, and you are surprised to see the Church of England so lively and so full, let me assure you that we are not closed for business, that we are open and with you in every part of this diocese, on the Wirral part of Merseyside, across Cheshire, around South Manchester. And if you want to partner with us in any project or be involved in any way, please do be in contact with your local priest or come and find one of our new bishops because we would love to be in conversation with you. And if, as happens regularly in these kind of gatherings, actually there has been a stirring that reminds you that faith is not dead and it is not outdated, well, come and have a quiet conversation because we would love to talk with you about how this hope in Christ can be part of your life. And secondly, we've welcomed and made a fuss of, rightly and properly, Julie and Sam. But can I just, as we come to an end, uh, welcome Claire and the family and Simon and the family. I know you live elsewhere, but you are welcome as part of this diocese as well. And it's very good to have you with us. And we look forward to sharing refreshments with you in just a moment. But now may God the Father, whose glory fills the heavens, cleanse you by his holiness and send you to proclaim his word. Amen. May Christ, who ascended to the heights, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, equip you and strengthen you in your ministry. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen.